thousand uh, <laughs> corrupt cases. Quite shocking numbers there. And we want to keep this conversation going on to bring in uh, the Executive Director of County Governance Watch, uh, Kevin Osido. Thank you for your time. Hassan. So are you shocked as you know many Kenyans are that you know you'd have a county like Busia registering 80,000 cases of corruption? I'm uh, really not shocked mm -hmm. because uh, these are things that we interact with on a daily basis. Right. As an organization that is county governance watch, last year for almost three months we did um, an assessment on what we call the county governance index, mm -hmm. which more or less looks at, uh, it looked at the best performing, worst performing counties mm -hmm. and then ranking insofar as service delivery areas are concerned, mm -hmm. which one is uh, counties performing best in uh, with regards to either health, mm -hmm. education, agriculture and then uh, infrastructure among others. And we also looked at uh, um, mechanisms that counties are putting in place to be able to deal with issues of corruption. And so out of 552 respondents who uh, engaged in the study, um, this is really not shocking mm. because 207 of them said they were aware that there was no action that counties were taking in mm -hmm. place. Only 23 said that they were aware about uh, people who had been taken to court. Mm -hmm. And 34 people said that they knew at least of uh, um, county officials who had been fired. Mm -hmm. And uh, 58 people said they are not interested because mm. governors and uh, people who, more or less the AIE holders, mm -hmm. uh, people who have authority to incur expenditures in mm -hmm. the counties are only there to siphon money and to mm. use it for their own personal uh, um, gains. Mm. So this is really a replica of what is happening in the counties. Mm -hmm. I'm not surprised about uh, northeastern counties mm. uh, that the, the, for the fact that Wajia has got uh, zero cases. Mm. <clears throat> of course, um, it depends on what uh, EACC was looking at, mm -hmm. but uh, in county governance, it becomes very difficult to put a finger to a case of, yeah. of corruption. But I'm sure that, for instance, two things would, uh, would uh, guide this insofar as um, counties that uh, benefit from the equitable uh, fund, mm -hmm. uh, because they are they are, the revenue uh, that is allocated to them is really minimal from the, the national treasury. Mm -hmm. But you look at counties like Nairobi that uh, take home almost uh, um, three quarters of the entire budget because of, uh, of course, population, mm -hmm. um, infrastructural issues mm -hmm. and other uh, factors that then, okay, poverty levels right. and, yeah, and other indicators that uh, mm -hmm. the National Treasury is looking at to be able to allocate resources to All right. counties. All right. Interesting. So being, a, you know, an expert in this particular field, how does it present itself in the county? How, how, how does it happen? Is it when it comes to the tendering process? Because I was looking at some numbers that, you know, for individuals to be able to uh, get hold of tenders or, you know, be awarded some tenders, they have to pay up almost 200,000 shillings uh, to get a tender. So how you know how rampant um, you know are the cases and how do they present themselves in the counties it is it is quite disturbing betty because in governance we have various uh, tools for mm -hmm. assessment of governance yeah, indices and of course uh, levels of of, um, of governance and one of these is called the tapi tapi the t means transparency the e the a means uh, accountability the p means prevention of corruption cases and excesses of uh, governance E, one of the E stands for enforcement so that you have courts working, you have the rule of law is being applied, and then E, the other E is education. Mm. So people are aware about what they need to do, uh, civil society, the media, people are able to, you know, um, demonstrate that uh, certain government of, uh, officials are not doing the right things. Right. And going through the report, I think ESCC has been able to present the, the exact replica of what is happening, because uh, one of the reasons why Kenyans opted for devolved governance was uh, a devolved governance system mm -hmm. was for them to be able to to uh, move for services to be moved closer yes. to the people and they wanted an opportunity for them to make uh, decisions mm. in key aspects of governance and just uh, leadership processes mm. on things that really mean a lot to them so mm. that their voices could count and uh, as we move on to the second generation of devolved governance this report is a 2015 report right 2016 2016 yes, report yes. and our report is the latest mm. I, I would only okay because it's it, it was done last year mm. but if you look at the reasons as to why this is happening they are more or less more or less the same and one of the things is indeed people want to bribe to get services, services. so service mm. getting delivered right if you're looking for water, for instance, to be able to go into your house, and there is um, the charter that therefore needs to guide service delivery mm -hmm. mechanisms and processes. Mm -hmm. So many people want to jump over that. Mm -hmm. The second thing is people are looking for employment opportunities. Mm -hmm. So they want to bribe so that they can be able to get jobs. Despite the fact that at the counties we have um, um, structures and institutions that are also supposed to guide um, 
recruitment processes. Mm -hmm. For instance, the County Public Service Delivery Board, we have the County Assembly Public Service Delivery Board, we have uh, the Office of the Governor, and indeed uh, all the other institutions, right. both at national and county government levels. But even when an advert is put on the papers, mm -hmm. for many counties, you realize that a majority of those who will apply are more or less people who have been called to apply. Right. And so if you look at people who just amorphously see it on the papers and mm. apply, the number is very limited mm. because they know that either way, even if I apply, Swali no... Kwani, who do you know who at the you county know? level? Or what so do you have? Exactly, or yeah. what do you have, or how much do how you much have? How much do you have? The other yeah. thing is the nepotism, favoritism, so that you want to bring your own people, everybody wants to be comfortable mm -hmm. to have in office, people that would be yes sir, yes sir to mm. them, people will pay allegiance even when things are not going mm -hmm. on well. And uh, this is evidenced by the fact that we have seen, even from civil society, um, a number of our colleagues who have been poached by county governments, either for good or for bad. Some mm -hmm. of them have been threatened, uh, especially those who are like us, who are watching over county mm -hmm. governance issues and people are fighting. They try to bring some sanity. Exactly. Okay. So if that is not pleasing to the whoever, um, the, the governor or whoever be, is, is being, yeah. where the uli ambaye nakuwa anamulikwa, then they feel Kevin Osido is not doing the right thing. Right. So we either threaten him or we bring him on board or mm -hmm. so find a way of silencing him. Right. So there could be a, a lot of reasons as to why corruption is rampant in the cases. But one of the major ones is that people want services. Mm -hmm. And so some of these reports and data should therefore be able to guide governance processes mm -hmm. so that we know where the gaps are and uh, we are able to also put them, uh, put mechanisms in mm -hmm. place and also, and also take advantage of uh, established mechanisms. Mm -hmm. For instance, we work very closely with the Commission on Revenue Allocation. Yes. And one of the, the frameworks that we've been trying to put forward for counties is what is called the County Budget and Economic Forum. Mm -hmm. And uh, out of the 47 counties, mm -hmm. 26 counties do not have um, this. Um, actually, there are yeah, 26 counties, right. including Muranga and many of these that we are seeing. Yeah. But the CBEF for the County Budget and Economic Forum is more or less like uh, an institution, that a framework that brings together almost everyone because yes. you have registered institutions, you have registered associations, mm -hmm. professional bodies, yeah. you have the common one inches, mm -hmm. you have the county government, you have a few institutions now at the, at the national level like CRA who then are part of that. Right. And why that is important is so that then you are able to have the people making decisions on key issues mm. and also are involved in the planning processes of things that require resources right. like uh, like governance and and of course health service delivery mm. and education among others all right yeah. and um, you know given one of the things about you know this whole conversation about corruption is that you know every time we get reports and i'm sure even the one that you know as county governance what you have i'm sure it's even worse than what we're seeing precisely it, it, it is right it is very worse or it's, <laughs> it's <laughs> horrible worse, you mean. Yeah. all right so <laughs> Okay, and, and you know, we keep forgetting these reports, you know, I mean, and, and the, the, the things never seem to improve. Um, do you think that this is actually something that, you know, can stop in this country, corruption? Because like you mentioned, yeah. there are Kenyans who really don't want to bribe. But, you know, for me to get this service, I have to talk it to Kidogo. For me, you know, when I'm arrested and maybe, you know, I don't want to go through the whole process, you know, you, you, you have to talk it to Kidogo. The police has been cited as still the most corrupt you know, um, you know, service, you know, when it comes to, uh, you know, service to Kenyans. So really, is it, is it, are these conversations we'll still have even two years from now, three years from now, is there really goodwill and political will to actually, you know, um, deal corruption a blow once and for all? Is it possible even? Uh, Betty, it is possible. Mm -hmm. But we, we, of course, will have uh, to tread quite some distances mm -hmm. to get to that level, especially when you realize that um, the institutions that are supposed to work are not working. Right. When you realize that there is this great amount of contempt of court um, decisions, mm -hmm. for instance, I don't want to bring in the Miguna Miguna issue because yeah. that is not what we are discussing, yeah. but it is a true picture of what Kenyans go through on a daily basis. There are lots of people who suffer in silence mm -hmm. just because they either don't want to be seen on social media mm -hmm. or they don't want to be seen on radio, I mean heard on radio or seen on TV, mm -hmm. but everyday Kenyans are suffering over things which institutions are supposed to work mm -hmm. over. So one of the things that, re that I would recommend, which has also been picked up by our report, which we'll be launching as we head towards the devolution conference, mm -hmm. maybe two weeks from now, mm -hmm. is to strengthen institutions. Mm -hmm. So that ESCC needs to move from this level and also tell us, out of this number of cases that mm -hmm. were reported to us, this is what we have been able to do. Mm -hmm. And so and so has been uh, charged in court, and these are the fines, and this is how the process is going. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, we will continue to see the who is who's mm -hmm. uh, messing around, stealing from uh, you know the taxpayers. Mm -hmm. 
a lot of uh, heat in terms of the, the talk, people sweating so much to be able to talk yeah. about it, but nothing being done. Right. But the, the common citizen who probably just uh, erroneously picks up something like Kuku from the village mm. is taken to the chief, then is taken to the AP post and is put in for yes. almost two weeks. Convicted, yeah. And, and you realize that these are things that really do not encourage even Kenyans who want to report cases because they'll be saying there's nothing that is being done. Mm. The second thing is advocacy. So once we strengthen the institutions, we need to advocate and ensure that civil society, the media are also part of this process that is going to ensure that uh, the negative elements of our governance and leadership are actually being put to the fore. Mm. And the third thing is, uh, of course, awareness creation mm -hmm. so that this data need, needs to be printed in a manner that the citizens can be able to relate to yeah. it. EACC and uh, maybe uh, the civil society organizations in Moranga and Busia and all the other counties need to be able to sit together mm. on a table and say, this is how our county looks like. Mm. We do this as county governance work through what we call the Governor's Roundtable, which right. brings together various decision-making um, uh, institutions and, and, uh, and organizations okay. at the county to be able to just have a reflection of how the, the county looks like and all then right. what lessons we can be able to learn. And maybe the last thing is, can we have people convicted mm. over offenses that are gross mm. insofar as making the lives of Kenyans difficult. All because right. I think if we have more than 83,000 cases mm. happening in a county, mm. these, are, these are reported uh, cases. Yes. How about the unreported, the unreported cases? cases? And it means that if we took time to be able to look at this, we'll discover certain things which might take away the hope and the dream of many, right. and of course the aspirations of many Kenyans right. so far as devolution is concerned. Let me finally challenge you, Kevin, because, yeah. um, you know, like you mentioned, maybe many Kenyans maybe do not have this information. And of course, it's also a challenge, you know, to the media and of course civil society, like you mentioned, that, you know, this information should be palatable so that, you know, the Kenyan, you know, in the village knows what exactly is happening. Because some of the governors who, you know, whose counties are doing really badly have been re-elected so yeah. does that mean there's five more years of you know <laughs> so from 80,000 we will see 160,000 you know in the years to come quite an interesting question mm -hmm. and that really boils down to two things one is our leadership mm -hmm. ethics article 10 chapter 6 of the constitution of Kenya what does it mean to us and Kenyans I think our uh, elections and our politics is driven by two things. One is your last name. Where do you come from? Right. We've seen the 2017 uh, elections at least trying to deal with this. We have a brother of mine who's been elected by my cousins from uh, mm -hmm. Kiambu, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> who really did not care about yeah. his last name. Interesting. And we have governors who also people thought were not doing what they expected and they were thrown out. But we've of course seen a number of governors mm. who should have learned from the 2013, the first generation of devolved governors. Yes. Some of them, even their names are at the top of this list yes. and this this really presents to us as Kenyans the manner in which we do our politics and how we elect and these are really lessons that we should be learning mm. the other thing I would say is as I, as, as, as I already said earlier on is institutions what does IEBC mean to Kenyans mm -hmm. when someone says he or she wants to vie for office and we say we are vetting the person if this data is going to be submitted to these institutions mm -hmm. let this data mean something so that then when we say an ex of uh, CS did this yes. in an office, she has no or he has no right to vie for office. Let that mean something yeah. because otherwise people will be, you know, stealing from pu the public uh, resources on a daily basis mm -hmm. with the hope that they will use that money to bribe voters and then okay. ultimately get into office. And right. the most uh, disheartening thing is that we actually take that money and we still go and vote for them. The other thing is vigilance, uh, vigilance mm -hmm. at the county level. Mm -hmm. We have the second generation of CIDPs, the County Integrated Development Planning Process, going on right now. Mm -hmm. Let people just go and sit in those meetings mm -hmm. and discuss about their right. counties. Because right. we've been doing this in about, uh, right now we have done about eight counties where we've visited. And people don't just show up because either our points will not make anything, mm. whatever we say will not be taken into account. The governor and his team and the MCS came here with a document which mm. was very big. Yeah. It was one copy. Only one person was reading it and asking us, as many as of the opinion say, I, the eyes have it. Right. And so the, the process needs to be broken down, and that's part of what we are trying to do with other uh, institutions. Mm -hmm. But I think that even at that level, let the platforms, mm -hmm. the public spaces, public participation processes be opened up to the people so that then whatever they say, if, if uh, ESCC says your county is corrupt, then people will actually be able to say, yes, we were part of this process, we don't think our county is, mm -hmm. is corrupt, mm -hmm. so that then we are able to have a balance of both sides. Mm -hmm. But in this case, we have a constitutional office 
going to our county and talking to households, which again, it, this is research, it's data. Mm. Sometimes, depending on the variables and the margin of errors, could be doubted okay. or could be believed. But I think that this needs to be opened up so that mm. even public participation processes and mechanisms yeah. are much more closer to the people and that their voices count in the decision-making processes. All right. Thank you very much, Kevin Asida, for your time. Uh, he is Executive Director of County Governance Watch. So when are you releasing your report again? Two weeks before the devolution conference. Two, <laughs> just <laughs> to hit things up. So. And yeah, you're exactly. saying it's worse than you know it this, this 2016 yeah. report. It is quite it's, it's bad. Terrible. Yeah, we, have, we we'll have counties where shocked. governors are saying we are doing very well, mm. we are doing very well, mm -hmm. but the people can't touch it. They can't. And when we talk about that, we'll, we'll actually even break down mm -hmm. that into how they are performing in so far as health is mm -hmm. concerned, education, yes, yes. agriculture, infrastructure, mm -hmm. the things that mean a lot to the people. Mm -hmm. And the report is, is actually almost done.